five San Francisco psychedelic albums from the 1960s. Now these aren't the main go-to albums. No Seristic Pillow here, no debut by Moby Grape, no Grateful Dead. But these are kind of albums that aren't the, what people always put on the list. I was there, I grew up in San Francisco, I was born in San Francisco, and I bought these albums when they came out. Maybe not these exact copies, but I just wanted to show five albums because I'm in the mood of psychedelia and the psychedelic scene in San Francisco, unlike some other areas like uh, came from like the folk scene. A lot of these stars, uh, stars, <laughs> these artists were from the folk and bluesy kind of uh, areas, but mostly folk. And let's start with uh, Big Brother and the Holding Company, their debut album. This is a Sunday's reissue, it's not my original. This is a Sunday's reissue that I believe is mono. I bought this album, the original, on mainstream records. And of course, the infamous uh, story, Janis Joplin plays the Monterey Jazz Festival, Monterey Pop Festival, excuse me, but that could have been cool, her singing at the jazz festival, her bluesy soulness. And Clive Davis sees her and they go to Columbia and the rest is history. But this is the first album I got. And the band I was in, in junior high school, played Light Is Faster Than Sound on here, Blind and Blind Man. Blind man, she walked. Blind man, she lived on a day and cried. Blind man stood on a step and cried. I'm, I'm misquoting it right now. What's great about this record, it's not real. I mean, Janis Joplin is a, definitely a part of it and sings some of the leads like Down On Me was the closest thing this album had to a hit. And mainstream didn't have the push that a Columbia Records would have. But this is a fantastic record, but everyone has control. Uh, Peter Albin, David Getz, James Gurley, Sam Andrew, and of course, Janis Joplin from Texas on vocals who lived in the hate in San Francisco on Page Street, as I recall. Um, but Bye Bye, Baby Bye Bye, Easy Rider, why does Fast and Sound it had this great little guitar thing, and, and we did that in our band, and I just love that. But, but blind man, she stood on a way and cried. Blind man stood on a way and cried. Blind man. You stumbled across Mazzy singing, one of the few times I sing, which I can't sing very well. Caterpillar. Dun, 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 dun. We actually did Caliphate or Two, as I recall. So anyway, fantastic record. Everyone likes Cheap Thrills. It is the better album. Cheap Thrills is the better album, but come on. The debut eventually picked up, bought out. It was on Columbia years later. Big Brother Holy Company, their debut. Now, of course, the Jefferson Airplane. Everyone knows Seristic Pillow. That's the one. That's what everyone wants. If you want psychedelic out there avant-garde, psychedelic go to after bathing and Baxters, but right now i'm going with crown of creation this record should have been bigger than it was it still did really well i love i mean this cover is fucking great is it uh, john hammersfeld designed it uh, the designer illustrator j van hammersfeld in los angeles cool cover what i love about this is grace slicks singing on lather lather was 20 years old today putting drumsticks on either side of his nose, snotting the best licks in town. Now I skipped some of the lyrics in there, but I don't remember them. That was beautiful. Triad, Grace Slick's voice on that, that song uh, written by David Crosby that the birds rejected is just a gorgeous song about a three-way, three-way kind of modernist, you know, sister lovers, water brothers, right out of Strangers in a Strange Land, the Robert Heinlein science fiction book about grokking, but I grok you. Share a little joke if you feel House of Punio Corners. Fantastic record. Doesn't get as much love as a lot of the other uh, in the Jefferson Raymond catalog, but I'm going here with Crown of Creation. Now, of course, one of the greatest rock and roll San Francisco psychedelic albums, which is more bluesy and rock and roll, and harder than a lot of the bands was the debut by Moby Grape. This record failed completely. This is Moby Grape's second album, Wow. It came with a second record of Psychedelia, Bluesy, really a jam record called Grape Jam with Bloomfield and Cooper uh, playing on it. David Rubinson produced this record. This record has grown in stature for me at the time, I'm not sure. 
Murder in the Heart for the Judge, the opening track. It's kind of a, this is a, they're kind of the closest to a white soul bluesy band in a way. What a fantastic record with this beautiful, beautiful cover. Uh, cover collage by Bob Cato for Columbia Records. It also has Bitter Wind, which is a beautiful kind of ballad. Motorcycle Irene, Miller's Blues, uh, and another version of Naked If I Want To. Uh, they did Naked If I Want To, a kind of acoustic number, small, short track on their debut album. This is an electronic version. And just like Gene Autry, a foxtrot with introduction by the old crooner radio host, um, Arthur, Arthur Godfrey. You have to get up and literally change your speed on your record player to 78 RPM. But I uh, love this one. An all-time favorite of mine, Sons of Champ, on their debut album, double album, 1968, the same year that Chicago Trans Authority came out. Horns. This is more jazzy horns, unlike uh, Chicago Transit Authority, but fantastic record. Get High with a 14-minute vibraphone solo. Beautiful. There's a certain, there's, there's Beatlesque things, there's soul things. Funky record, cool record. Sons of Champlin, Loosen Up Naturally. Um, this is a later issue because they, they said fuck here and they had to cross it out. And lastly, those of you in San Francisco know Country Doing the Fish, their first album, uh, Electric Mind and Body, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the second one, I feel like I'm fixing to die. But not many people think of this one. I think this is their third, fourth album, maybe. Here we are again. It's soulful. It's jazzy. It's funky. It's There's horns on it, and it's a fantastic record. Here we are again on Vanguard Record, again, produced by Sam Charters, uh, a blues-based uh, curator, producer, artist um, who has a great uh, musicology, musicological history, fantastic record, a great sounding record on Vanguard Record that starts out as a blues and jazz, uh, blues and rootsy label, but uh, puts this fantastic record out, Country Joe and the Fish. People don't know this record, they don't see this record very much, but buy this, it's great. Be sure to wear some flowers in your hair. Mazzy loves you, and I haven't spoken about San Francisco in so long. So take care, everyone. Mazzy loves you.